chapter 26 is a long chapter. It's at least as long as 25 is, so maybe I'll get through it a little quicker if I don't run my mouth quite as much, but I don't know. It's kind of hard not to, and the book's pretty, pretty boring by itself, you know. It's more fun to comment as I go along. Anyhow, um, Nephi's taken his book back, away from Isaiah and Jacob. <laughs> He's writing now. This is, uh, yeah. Chapter 25, he named Jesus Christ for the first time. Because he had to top Jacob, who came up with the name Christ by himself. Well, he had an angel whisper in his ear. This is, after all that, talk about the law and how they're going to obey the law, but they can't wait to stop obeying the law in the next four or five hundred years. <laughs> Almost six hundred years, actually. And after Christ shall have risen from the dead, he shall show himself unto you, my children and my beloved brethren, and the words which he shall speak unto you shall be the law which ye shall do. Better know the bosses. Whoever uh, represents. Well, here on earth. That's who the boss is. Give them your money and children and everything else they want. And they promise not to pay any taxes. For behold, I say unto you that I have beheld that many generations shall pass away, and there shall be great wars and contentions among my people. All right, you know what? I'm going to have a drink. I got a ways to go before it comes to pass. Something comes to pass. God, it says it came to pass almost. 3,000 times in this book, and I'm taking extra drinks. Uh, I guess I should put in a liver transplant request now. Damn, this is just too good to rush. dawdling. And after the Messiah shall come, there shall be signs given unto my people of his birth. Because he hasn't even been born yet. And they're already talking about him rising from the dead. Because see, they, they're the first ones to be Christians. So Antioch, shut the fuck up. It's in North America, or at least this, this region, somewhere, where they first were Christians. And they have them Antioch beat by centuries. Yeah. Yeah, there should be signs unto my people of his birth. Then we start his countdown. Hurry up and die! See, for all the things Jesus had to say and all the stories they tell about him, he was just here to die and come back. I mean, he only healed the people he was around. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Signs uh, of his birth. Also of his death and resurrection. So, <laughs> you're going to get signs. Yeah, so look for it in 3rd Nephi, which is at the back of the book. And great and terrible shall be that day unto the wicked. Those days, you mean. I mean, which one? When he's born? When he dies? When he resurrects? <laughs> You're not being very clear. 
Yeah, the wicked. I guess that's me. I guess I should get busy. I'm not being very good at being wicked. Mostly I just work and pay taxes. As you can see, this is a pretty boring book. <laughs> All right. Uh, and for they shall perish, and they perish because they cast out the prophets and the saints. I don't recall anyone being a saint in the Old Testament. I think that's a New Testament invention. Or even a post-New Testament invention. I don't know. Chime in. Correct me. You know, educate me. I'm here to be edumacated. Yeah. They cast out the, the prophets and the saints and stoned them and slay them. Wherefore, the cry of the blood of the saints shall ascend up to God from the ground against them. So we're ripping off the Cain and Abel uh, story. Yeah, he likes to use that too. Voices and... <clears throat> The blood of the, you know, rising up from the ground. Yeah. Wherefore, all those who are proud and do wickedly, that cometh shall burn, that day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, for they shall be as double. That reminds me. I'm on vacation. I have decided if I'm going to shave. <clears throat> and they killed, uh, and they that kill the prophets and the saints, the depths of the earth shall swallow them up. So now we're stealing from Moses. Uh, yeah. Saith the Lord of hosts, and mountains shall cover them, and whirlwinds shall carry them away, and buildings shall fall upon them, and crush them to pieces, and grind them to powder. And they shall be visited with thunderings, and lightnings, and earthquakes, and all manner of destructions. For the fire of the anger of the Lord shall be kindled against them, and they shall be as stubble. And the day that cometh shall consume, consume them, saith the Lord of hosts. Oh, the pain and the anguish of my soul, for the loss of the slain of my people, for I, Nephi, <laughs> have seen it, and it will nigh consumeth me before the presence of the Lord. But I must cry unto my God, Thy ways are just. But behold the righteous that hearken unto the words of the prophets, and destroy them not, but look forward unto Christ with steadfastness, for the signs which are given, notwithstanding all persecution, behold, they are they. Are they they? They're really they. Wow. All right. They are they. <laughs> behold, they are they which shall not perish. But the Son of Righteousness shall appear unto them, and he shall heal them, but he's not capitalized, and he isn't anywhere. That's JC you're talking about. We can say his name now. He shall appear unto them, and he shall heal them, and they shall have peace with him, until three generations have passed away, and many of the fourth generation shall have passed away in righteousness. And when these things have passed away, 
You should have done a passed away drinking game. A speedy destruction cometh unto my people, for notwithstanding the pains of my soul, I have seen it. Yes, he's saying that all over again. Wherefore I know that it shall come to pass. I think that's the only one. I don't know. I just glanced it over. Don't have any thoughts about this one. Just whatever comes to my head. I have seen it, wherefore I know that it shall come to pass, and they sell themselves for naught. Four, four, I like that double four he does, he puts a comma between two fours. <laughs> that, that just cracks me up, what is like the third time I've seen that, or noticed it? <laughs> four, four, <laughs> the reward of their pride and their foolishness. Putting two fours together in a sentence with a comma between is kind of silly. I'm no English major. I'm pretty lousy, actually, but even I can smell a rat. <sighs> the reward of their pride and their foolishness, they shall reap destruction, for because they yield unto the devil and choose works of darkness rather than light. Therefore, they must go down to hell. For the Spirit of the Lord will not always strive with man. Yeah, we noticed. Almost never strives with man. Doesn't seem to be doing anything, actually. I think, the, I think he's got autopilot on. Is there an auto guy, God button, you know, and he takes a nap? I mean, you know, who knows how long a God sleeps? I mean, a thousand years is as a day to him. <laughs> uh, grieveth my soul. And as I spake concerning the convincing of the Jews that Jesus is the very Christ... They'll go, what's the fucks of Christ? <laughs> this exilic Babylonian exile time. <laughs> Christ? That sounds like some weird Greek word. Do you mean Messiah? See, he'd be walking around going, I'm Yeshua Messiah. It's not a name, it's a title. Neither one's a name, I don't think. It must needs be that the Gentiles be convinced also that Jesus is the Christ. They might understand. The eternal God. I mean, they had lots of sons of God. And that he manifests, manifesteth, manifesteth, there we go, himself, uncapitalized, unto all those who believe in him. Uncapitalized. I won't even mention. I'll mention it if it's capitalized. How's that? Unto all those who believe in him. So he'll manifest himself into you if you believe in him. Because you don't need to see him because you believe already. But somebody who doesn't believe. I mean, come on. At least Thomas got to prod Jesus' punctures. <laughs> That's all I'm asking. Come on, man. I just want to stick my finger in your stab wound. And then I'll believe. I mean, if Thomas got that benefit, I think I'm entitled. Because all I've heard is a bunch of noise and fairy tales and circular logic my whole life. And I looked for real truth. 
even read this. <clears throat> and he manifesteth himself unto all those who believe in him by the power of the Holy Ghost. That's that fuzzy, tingly feeling you get. Yea, unto every nation, kindred, tongue, and people, working mighty miracles, signs, and wonders among the children of men, according to their faith. Otherwise, it doesn't work. Even Jesus had a problem in his hometown. Couldn't do nothing there. Well, it depends on which gospel you're reading. Uh, but, behold, I prophesy unto you concerning the last days. Concerning the days when the Lord God shall bring these things forth unto the children of men. After my seed and the seed of my brethren shall have dwindled in unbelief and shall have been smitten by the Gentiles. Yea, after the Lord God shall have camped against them round about. And shall have laid siege against them with a mount and raised forts against them. And after they shall have been brought down low in the dust, even they that are not yet, the words of the righteous shall be written, and the prayers of the faithful shall be heard. And all those who have dwindled in unbelief shall not be forgotten. Oh, no. For those who shall be destroyed shall speak unto them out of the ground, and their speech shall be low out of the dust. Well, yeah, maybe a little muffled, too. <laughs> and their voice shall be as one that hath a familiar spirit. He means a ghost. For the Lord God will give unto him power. That's a bait that hook that he may whisper concerning them, even as it were out of the ground, and their speech shall whisper out of the dust. Damn, chap uh, verse 16 is, uh, could have been one sentence. Maybe two. But instead it's this big old block. For thus saith the Lord God, they shall write, hang on a second, I hate it when I can't turn this into a drinking game, so I'm going to drink anyway. Fuck you, you damn buzz killer, Joseph Smith. Better. All right. For thus saith the Lord, they shall write these things which shall be done among them, and they shall be written and sealed up in a book, and those who have dwindled in unbelief sh not, uh, shall not have them. Those, the book. I'm in unbelief and I've got your gold book. I'm treating it just fine. I've even gave it a nice uh, coat of paint. And I, I treat it with great respect. Just not what's inside it. <laughs> for they seek to destroy the things of God I I just like to pop balloons that's all I like to pop bubbles and that's all this is faith is a bubble a pretty damn durable one though Wherefore, as those who have been destroyed have been destroyed speedily, and the multitudes of their terrible ones shall be as chaff that passeth away, yea, yea, thus saith the Lord God, it shall be in an instant, suddenly. Oh, fuck. Verse 19. Bless your heart. All right, with a little editing, maybe I don't won't have to do this one again. I mean, it might be shaping up. Ooh. 
shields are down. Verse 19. And it shall come to pass that those who have dwindled in unbelief shall be smitten by the hands of the Gentiles. And the Gentiles are lifted up in the pride of their eyes and have stumbled because of the greatness of their stumbling block that they have built up many churches. Yeah, noticed. Nevertheless, they put down the power and miracles of God and preach up unto themselves their own wisdom and their own learning that they may get gain and grind upon the face of the poor. And there are many churches built up with uh, up which cause envyings and strife strife and malice. Yeah, I've seen that. Just can't pronounce it right now. <laughs> and there are also secret combinations. Even as in times of old, according to the combinations of the devil. <laughs> I'm scared. Not really. <laughs> For he is the foundation of all these things. He's talking about your church, people. If you're not a Mormon, he's talking about your church. Nephi. That prick. That, <laughs> that prophet, I mean. Yea, the foundation of murder and works of darkness. Yea, and he leadeth them up by the neck with a flaxen cord until he bindeth them with his strong cords forever. I'll keep a pocket knife handy. <laughs> For behold, my beloved brethren, I say unto you that the Lord God worketh not in darkness, <clears throat> he doth not anything save it be for the benefit of the world. It's the devil that's doing all that shit. <laughs> not God. He's napping. The devil's running rampant right now. <laughs> He's the god of this earth, they say. <sighs> he... For he loveth the world, he just tells us to hate the world. Even that he layeth down his own life, but he hasn't done it yet. Such foreshadowing. <laughs> he layeth down his own life, but not really. He just made a little puppet of meat. <laughs> it died. And... Major guilt trip on all of us, especially the Jews that are from our time going, Jesus, I, we weren't consulted about that or the fucking circumcision, and neither was I, God damn it. I hate the fact that I'm missing a whole bunch of great nerve endings. Fucking pricks. Damn buzz killers. <sighs> For behold, my bre beloved brethren, I say unto you that the Lord worketh not in darkness. He doth not anything save it be for the benefit of the world. For he loveth the world, even that he layeth down his own life, that he may draw all men. I'm assuming they mean that as human. <sighs> unto him. Wherefore he commandeth none that they shall partake, not partake. Things are starting to swim around, folks. Not partake of his salvation. Behold, doth he cry unto any, saying, Depart from me? <laughs> <laughs> hmm. 
Behold, I say unto you, Nay! But he saith, Cometh unto me all ye ends of the earth. A sphere has no end. We're being poetic, all right? That's what it is. Buy milk and honey without money and without price. Damn, more repetition, more I Isaiah ripoffs. You know, I'd like to do a redacted version of this sometime. Just an idea popping in my head right now. Cross out all repetitions and all quotes from other books and see what's left. I don't know. It's a thought. It's probably a stupid idea. All right. Behold, hath he commanded any that they should depart out of the synagogues or out of the houses of worship? Behold, I say unto thee, Nay! Hath he commanded any that they should not partake of his salvation? <laughs> Behold, I say unto you, Nay! But he hath given it free for all men, and he hath commanded his people that they should persuade all men to repentance. And it's fucking annoying. I'd leave you alone if you'd leave me alone. I'm still waiting. And I'm still fucking with you because I work downtown. <laughs> and they're everywhere. There's a Scientology booth outside. J-dubs everywhere. I got a Mormon church next door. Elders always coming around. But they seem to steer clear of me lately. I guess they painted lamb's blood over my doorpost or something. <laughs> Behold, hath the Lord commanded any that they should not partake of his goodness? Show me some. Biatch. Behold, I say unto you, Nay! <laughs> but all men are privileged the one like unto the other, and none are forbidden. He commandeth that they shall be, there shall be no priestcrafts, or witchcrafts. It's the same thing in my opinion. No priestcrafts. For behold, priestcrafts are that men preach and set themselves up for a light unto the world, that they may get gain and praise of the world. But they seek not the welfare of Zion. Come on, leave Joel Osteen alone. He's a nice guy. I kind of like him, actually. He says God wants us all to be rich. My mom's hooked on him, by the way. She went to one of his live shows. But to her credit, she I made her promise not to give him any money, and she, she claimed she didn't. I said, he's rich enough, he doesn't need a widow's might. <sighs> Behold, the Lord hath forbidden this thing, wherefore the Lord God hath given a commandment that all men should have charity to the rich. Which charity is love? Sounds a little codependent, doesn't it? If you love me, you give me your fucking money. <laughs> and believe all my bullshit. <laughs> and except they should have charity, they are were they were nothing. Wherefore it should have they should have charity. They would not suffer wait. And except they have charity. They were nothing. Wherefore, if they should have charity, they would not suffer the laborer of Zion to perish. Whatever the fuck that means. But the laborer in Zion shall labor for Zion. It's in Salt Lake City, by the way, folks. For if they labor for money, they shall perish. And again, the Lord God hath commanded that men should not murder, that they should not lie, that they should not steal, 
that they should not take the name of the Lord, their God, in vain. It's okay, he's not my God, I can do it. <laughs> they that should not envy, they should not envy, wait, that they should not envy, that they should not have malice, that they should not contend one with the other, that they should not commit, commit whoredoms, <coughs> and that they should do none of these things, for whoso doeth them shall perish. Oops. For none of these iniquities come of the Lord, for he doeth that which is good among the children of men, and he doeth nothing save it be plain unto the children of men. I call bullshit on that one. <laughs> and he inviteth them all to come unto him and partake of his goodness. Because he's going to show us some pretty soon. After he's done fucking us over. No, wait, that's right. It's the devil. His punk. And he denieth none that come unto him, black and white, bond and free, male and female. That sounds pretty fucking progressive until you consider the fact that he's still advocating slavery. Bond and free. <sighs> and he remembereth the heathen and all alike unto God, both Jew and Gentile. Thank God. What a pain in the ass that book was. But chapter 27's fun. I promise you. I'll see you in chapter 27. I hope you'll be there because it's good. Peace out and have a wonderful whatever the fuck it is. Bye.